Hey guys, this is Jeremy with Patrick and Friends Music Company, and today we're going to talk about music production for beginners. Specifically, we're going to discuss four essential plugins that you should be using in all of your productions and that should come standard in whatever DAW you prefer. Those plugins are EQ, Compression, Reverb, and Delay. In this video, we're going to talk about EQ. So if you want to learn about those other plugins, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So what is EQ? Well, every sound that we hear, every sound that you record is made up of hundreds, if not thousands of different frequencies. For instance, my voice is made up of really high frequencies, like the sounds that come from the front of my mouth when I make S's or T's, and really low frequencies, like all the vowels that are coming from my throat. EQ, or equalization, is the process of raising and lowering the volume of specific frequencies to kind of balance out the sound as a whole and make it sound more pleasing to the ear. Let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so what I've done is I've downloaded a drum loop off of Splice and imported it into Logic. And then I've thrown an instance of Logic's stock EQ plugin onto that channel. I'm using Logic because it's the DAW that I'm most comfortable in, but whatever DAW you're using should have some kind of EQ built in. However, if you happen to be using one that doesn't come with an EQ, there are plenty of great free plugins that you can download off of the internet. We'll provide a link to those below. One more thing should be said, Logic's EQ plugin and a lot of other EQ plugins come with a lot of really nice features that are more useful for more advanced audio processing. However, this video is about getting you comfortable with the very basics of EQ. So if you want us to get more in depth on this subject, let us know in the comments. Right now we're looking at the main graphical interface for the EQ plugin in Logic. When I play the drum loop, you'll notice that the line graph starts to move around in time with the music. What you're looking at is a visual representation of all the different frequencies that you can hear when you listen to this drum loop. The horizontal axis of this graph represents the actual individual frequencies. So the lower frequencies are hanging out around here on the left side, and all the higher frequencies are over here on the right side. And the vertical axis of this graph represents the gain, or the volume, of each of these individual frequencies. So whenever part of the graph jumps upwards, that means that those frequencies are getting louder. And as they fall, it means they're getting quieter. You'll notice, every time you hear the kick drum, these lower frequencies jump up. And every time you hear the snare drum, these mids and mid highs all kind of get a boost. And then lastly, these incredibly high frequencies over here, the, the super high frequencies, they're all kind of dancing around every time you hear the hi-hat play. So what we want to do is use this EQ to raise and lower the volume of different frequencies so that we can get these drums sounding as good as they possibly can. We do this by applying filters to the frequency curve. And all the filters in this plugin are housed up here at the top. There are three basic filter types that we're going to use. The first is a bell curve. These can be applied anywhere along the frequency spectrum and can be used to scoop out or enhance a specific frequency and the frequencies around it. And they kind of look like this, just like a bell curve. I'll reset that back to zero. So you'll notice when we're listening to the drum loop that as you pull this filter down, it starts to sound different. Parts of the drum set start to get quieter. Now, before I go any further, I should probably mention that I know that some of your EQ plugins might not actually have a visual interface like this one. So if you are using an EQ that just relies on knobs and number values, you're going to want to be paying attention to these values down here. This top line, these first, uh, these first numbers, are the frequency. So these correlate with a point's position on the horizontal axis of the graph. So the lower a number is, the lower the frequency is. The second number, this is the gain, and just like with the horizontal axis, this changes as you move vertically along that axis. 
and this represents how loud or how quiet something is. Lastly, this value over here is what's known as a Q value. So as you change the Q value, the slope of the bell curve gets narrower or wider. And so this has the effect of changing what frequencies you're impacting with your bell curve. So for instance, let's, let's raise it up pretty ridiculous like this. So right now we've got a whole broad range of frequencies that are being affected by this filter. As we start to increase the Q value, we're only affecting a very isolated frequency. And you'll even notice sometimes they'll, they'll jump up as you drag it around. So if you don't have a visual interface, don't worry. Just make sure you're paying attention to what all of these values down here are doing. Bell curves are really useful for finding specific frequencies and isolating them, reducing them, raising them. When I listen to this drum set, and especially the snare drum, I'm noticing a frequency right around here. It's kind of sticking out. And you can actually even see it over here on the graph every once in a while, right here. How it jumps up like that. Now, normally you do not want to do your mixing visually. You definitely want to go by ear, but I can, I'm pretty sure this is the frequency I'm hearing. I'm hearing like a And so if I just cut it, that might even be too narrow. Yeah, I think that sounds better. Now I'm also hearing some kind of like squelchy action going on up here in the highs. Like every time you hear the snare drum. So I might take another one of these, maybe around like 5K. Narrow it up a little bit. And yeah, I think that sounds a little bit better. So the next filter that we're going to talk about is the shelving filter. Shelving filters can be applied to the low end or the high end of the frequency spectrum, and these are going to affect every single frequency above or below the point you choose. So you'll notice its shape is different when you add it onto the EQ curve. Now, instead of having a sort of bell curve shape to it, no matter where you put it, you'll notice that it affects all of the frequencies below it if you're using the low shelf. And then over here, it'll affect all the frequencies above it if you're using the high shelf. Now, I usually like to use shelving filters to get a little more like sparkle out of the high range. So I might apply, I'll turn it off first. I might add it in maybe around like close to 9K. And I'll narrow the slope so that it doesn't pull up some of these frequencies that I already dragged down. And then I think that that gets the, the symbols sounding a little bit better. So the last filter type we're going to talk about are high cut and low cut filters. Now these are also called high pass and low pass filters. It gets a little bit confusing because a high cut is the same as a low pass. I'm just going to call them cut filters because I think that that's a little more straightforward. So Essentially, what a low cut filter does is exactly what it says. It eliminates all of the low frequencies below whatever point you set. So I'm going to play the loop. And you'll notice that as I drag it up, all the lows just completely disappear. And the same can be said for a high cut, for a high cut filter. A lot of electronic artists actually like to use these filters. They'll automate them, so they'll have them move throughout the song to sort of carve out different areas of the frequency spectrum to make it sound more interesting. The most common uses as far as mixing for these filters, I think, is to eliminate a lot of low frequencies that are unnecessary. Because when you get down here around like 20 and 30 hertz, these are frequencies that you can barely hear at all uh, with the human ear. Oftentimes when you're recording, maybe an acoustic guitar or vocals with a microphone, there'll be subtle rumbling from maybe even just the microphone stand shaking around a little bit. 
and a low cut filter is really useful for eliminating any of that unwanted rumble. Um, and so I'm just for the purposes of this, uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to add the low cut here to kind of remove even more of these lows. And that more or less gives us a fully EQ'd uh, drum break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to AB this. I'm going to turn the EQ on and off so that you can hear the differences between the before and after we applied the EQ. So first I'm going to turn it off. This is what it sounds like without any EQ. And then with it on. A lot of the differences are pretty subtle. Um, this should be your goal when you're using EQ. You don't want to make big obvious changes um, because it's, it's going to not sound natural. But I think that it is noticeably better. I'll do it one more time. This is without. This is with it on. There's still some squelching up here in the highs. Uh, it might take a little bit more, uh, more surgical precision to kind of get that out of there. But I am pretty happy with this. So I think that's where we're going to leave this drum break. So just to recap, we've talked about all of the different basic parameters of an EQ plugin. We discussed frequency, which is how low or how high a specific sound is. We discussed gain which is how loud or how quiet something is. And we also discussed the Q value on a filter, which is how wide or how narrow the slope is for the specific frequency you choose. We also discussed the three different basic filter types, which are bell curves, which are useful for getting specific frequencies along the spectrum. We discussed shelving filters, which are useful for going all the way up to or all the way down to the ends of the frequency spectrum. And then we also talked about cut or pass filters, which are useful for completely eliminating all of the audio coming from either end of the spectrum. So those are the basics of EQ. Hopefully the next time you open it up in your DAW, you won't feel overwhelmed because you know what all of the different controls can do. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to EQ, let us know in the comments. And for more music lessons, subscribe to the Patrick and Friends YouTube channel.